I think the language of you are safe is extraordinary. I don't remember ever hearing that come up as a child. I wasn't in a necessarily unsafe, but I don't remember that ever coming up as something someone told me, you know? No, we didn't learn that. No, no we didn't learn that. No, let's try again. Let's go. You know, <laughs> you need a mistake. Try harder. Try harder. Let's go. <laughs> Absolutely. Or like, what is it the British say? Um, having, you know, keep a stiff upper lip and keep uh -huh. going or, yeah. you know. Exactly. <laughs>
on television, um, other children, you know, when he started going to nursery school, other children would um, cry. So now he cries when he never used to. And so we see all of this behavior that really is not supportive of learning and growing and being inspired. How do you get inspiration from that feeling? So I really see the need for us to uh, lean into this. I think this is a contribution to uh, the education of humanity. I think these things are very important. I have so many times mm -hmm. been uh, on the phone with you when you're outside with your son and you're telling him that you're going to uh, show him mindfulness outside and he shows you mindful things. That's so right. tell, take us through a walk outside that's a little different so that we can learn how to be mindful with, with ourselves and others outside. Absolutely. Well, young kids are naturally mindful. They are in the moment. They are so present and we can learn so much from them, right? We, we had that as kids and slowly right. start to lose that. So when we're outside, being in nature is such a great way to be mindful. You feel so connected. You feel connected to your environment and being connected to your environment helps you connect to yourself, which in turn helps you connect with others. So when we go on a walk, we like to do a five senses practice. Hmm. We'll notice five beautiful things in nature that we, that we see, but things that we may not have noticed if we weren't being mindful. We'll notice four sounds that we hear, whether it's we live on the beach. So maybe it's the um, ocean waves or just the sea breeze. Or if you really pay attention, you can hear the palm trees sway and dance. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. And we notice three things we feel, whether that's the clothing on our skin or the breeze or the sunshine, or if it's a cloudy day or misting, the rain. Um, and we'll notice two things we smell and one thing we can taste. And just becoming aware of our five senses helps us become embodied, which helps us become mindful and it settles the nervous system and it helps us be present and it helps us connect. And we have access to this anytime, whether we're in school or taking a test and need that moment or walking outside or just looking around the room even. So a five senses practice is always great and kids love it. And it's really great for us adults too. I love this. I'm so glad that you've shared it so that our listeners can also try it. I have found in my own practice that whenever people are in anxiety, they're always in the future. They're almost never in the past, but they're almost always in the future anticipating something terrible is going to happen, but it's not happening to them in the moment that we're in or if they're depressed, they're often in the past remembering something horrible that they have manifested um, either in their thinking or in reality about a past event. And it is that sweet spot, that gentle sweet spot that is in the now moment where all power exists. And I think this bringing people to this is um, very important because automatically the way the world is, the way uh, technology is, we find ourselves often not in the moment. Introductory Energetic Clearing. This shamanic clearing specifically targets addictions, negative thought forms, anger spheres, and more. Of the Sun cleans and clears the primary things affecting our energetic body and gives us tools to support our healing journey. This service is priced perfectly for your regular energetic maintenance. Recommended use is once a month. For more information and sign up, visit ofthesun.com. One of the things I love about the book is the active meditation that you sit together and you actively go into the silence or into the now moment. Mm -hmm. And in the now moment, everything is fine. You, right. can, you can find each other. You can find your love. There's no fear. You're in the now moment. So I love that part about the book. Now, when I'm reading the book to my grandson, that that's the he does his little hands like this and he closes his eyes and we're in the now moment. It's so lovely. That's Are there any things that you'd like to share with us? I love that we have these keys. We have this exercise. Are there any examples of you having done this with people that you have seen that change them? Yes, absolutely. I mean, these um, 
these practices that I use in the book are actually practices that I use with my own family and in my classes. So when we put our hands over our heart, just that is helping our nervous systems feel safe. Yeah. We are telling our body we are okay and we are safe. We can yeah. breathe and we can calm down. It's actually a biologically hardwired yes. um, system that helps us that right. we just don't really access that much. We usually access fight or flight, right? Yeah. Or freeze and submit, but we don't access this befriending of ourselves and the self-compassion practice. So that's one when they're connecting on the bed and they're sitting there with their hands over their heart. It's a simple way to take care of yourself and check right. in. And then the um, breathing activity that we do in the book, that opening your chest wide as you breathe right. in, kind of stretches us open and like opens us up to the present moment, right? right? Not right. not avoiding it, it's kind of accepting it. And then as you exhale, you give yourself a hug, which is another act of self-compassion. And interestingly, the body doesn't know if your mommy's giving you a hug or you're right. giving yourself a hug. So right. it's the same sort of chemical response of, you know, oxytocin and all these warm, lovely chemicals that come from a hug and you're giving it to yourself. So it's really learning to take care of yourself in that moment, breathing in through the nose and exhaling through the mouth. So, yeah, so those are both in the book. These are such um, wonderful, uh, actually very sophisticated, um, neurological, um, scientifically proven Yes. ideas, this idea of um, going to the heart. The In recent scientific studies, it has been proven that the heart has neurons. So we know that not only the brain has neurons, the heart has neurons, and also the gut has neurons. So in breathing, you can sometimes triangulate, if, depending on how you're breathing, triangulate those things so that you're in the present moment. And I think that's such a rich understanding, and it's very much backed up by the most recent cutting edge science that supports all of these things. The idea of touching one's heart brings attention to the now moment. In touching any part of the body, if you touch your nose, if you touch, it brings you into the now moment. There's so many things that are to be um, really uh, exalted from the simple practice. There are a lot of very important principles here I think the language of you are safe is extraordinary. I don't remember ever hearing that come up as a child. I wasn't in a necessarily unsafe. I don't remember that ever coming up as something someone told me, you know? No, we didn't learn that. No, no we didn't learn that. Yeah, try again. Let's go. You know, <laughs> you need a mistake. Try harder. Try harder. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Or like, what is it the British say? Um, having, you know, keep a step up or lip and uh -huh. keep going or, yeah. you know, yeah. but this idea of uh, this really human, and I say that because um, we assume that we're humans, but we're not always. But this idea of you are safe. And it's such a spiritual idea that in truth, we live in such a beneficent universe mm -hmm. that whether we're alive or whether we're not, we're safe. Whether we're in the in this moment or in the next moment when we're playing with our toys or outside, we're safe. That's right. We're we're safe, and that doesn't. Um, there's no benefit for us not to be safe. That's right. We, we gain nothing by not being in our safety. It's, so that's how that's I think right. of that. So there, you're loaded. You've got you know every paragraph that's in the book is loaded with all of this neural science, all of these spiritual, ancient spiritual principles, all of this assuredness of your uh, sanctity and sacredness as an aspect of the universe that cannot be destroyed. You are a part of the energy that cannot be eliminated or destroyed in any way. So all of this supports that in such a wonderful way. So tell me, when you uh, first became a speech pathologist and you were working with children, how did you incorporate this into it in the early stages? I was actually, 
I think, around with you when you were doing some of this. Mm -hmm. I think we've known each other that long. So, you know, I knew I would always merge the two somehow. I was always mindful and meditative. Even in my grad school years, my thesis was how can pranayama yoga help individuals who stutter and who have communication disorders. Oh my goodness. So I, that was my thesis. So I was always gonna merge the two. And I found that I went right into a private practice after mm -hmm. my clinicals. And I found that I could not work on a child's articulation issues or language issues without working on the child holistically. Yeah. If that child couldn't attend to a task or couldn't pay attention with me and sit for three minutes, look, we, we have bigger issues to work on than yeah. their S's or their R's being perfect, right? Yeah. So, and if they can't engage with me meaningfully and share with me how they're feeling that day and open up, like, so I was working on the child as a whole. So we were doing deep breathing and also our breathing is a huge part of our speech. I mean, you even learn it in the science when you're in grad school in speech. You have to understand the, that the, the speech mechanism requires lung capacity and the diaphragm and diaphragmatic breathing, which is, of course, also mindful breathing, right? So it's all it was always tied for me. And mm -hmm. then what happened was my, my client's parents would say to me, why is so-and-so so calm when they're with you? Or why do I feel calm when I'm with you? You know, I always love when you come because the house feels just more peaceful. So I knew I was going to start transitioning into incorporating more and more mindfulness into my practices. And then I became certified because I realized I love teaching speech and I will continue to do so. I still do so. But teaching mindfulness and helping people access the present moment which is really the only moment where we can be and act and do, and also the only moment that we can ever feel happy or content is right now. So helping people access that is really what I wanted to do. It's such a truth of the universe, in fact. There really is only this now moment. Mm -hmm. So when we run away to the future or escape to the past, we have left the reality that is this now moment. And I love this idea of uh, in your own experiences that just being in the morphic field of you talking to a person, a child in person or on the screen, the people around them begin to be able to breathe better, begin to be able to uh, operate better because of the mindfulness or the idea of being in the now calms everything down makes everything doable, it removes all the anxiety, and it presents an environment in which success can take place. Mm -hmm. So many children now are underperforming, you know, they because of self-imposed um, limitation. Right. And then it's really about not having, they re, they're remembering a correction or a failure or a situation that is now gone. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, they're, they're no longer in the present moment where the, the opportunity, the opportunity exists in the, only in the present moment for all possibilities That's to true. take place. So mm -hmm. I, I'm so um, encouraged by this. I think the mindfulness training is so important for companies, for children, for parents, for everyone, especially in this time of so much chaos in our environment. So I think this is such a lovely time. Do you plan on writing another book? Well, I actually, when I wrote Leo's Secret Key, it was a very long story. I wrote it, it just came through me and I wrote it in one day. And then I spent many months editing it, of course, <laughs> but it actually was a larger story. So the second story is out there. And the second story is where Leo actually uses everything he learned from his mom and puts it into practice at school. Ah. Makes a mistake and has the opportunity to actually utilize these mindfulness practices and strategies. And yeah. then he has another child who also makes a mistake. And then the teacher has him teach the entire class. So it's about then sharing this idea of self-compassion 
Well, I'm going to show one of the pictures. The artwork is just so lovely. I want to show our audience some of the pictures of Leo with his friends and how lovely the, they're playing with toys and the different, different things that happen in the uh, book. I don't want to give the entire book away, but this is really a lovely story of kind of narrated by the mom, but it is Leo's story. It is Leo's experiences. It is all of our children, all of our grandchildren. This is the opportunity for them to find this secret hidden key. Is there yeah. anything else you'd like to share with us? Today? Well, I wanted to know if you noticed, I threw in a little bit of my spiritual woo-woo side, which I try to keep a little bit out of kindly, but here they're surrounded by their gold. Yes. Peaceful and just, you know, every yeah. gold is so such a high resonating color for us. So I loved that little piece. I needed to throw it in there. <laughs> well, I, you know, the, the uh, spiritual aspect is the reality. Yes. Everything happens in the unseen before it manifests into the scene. So the thoughts that you had, the years that you developed this understanding, of course it could pour through you in one fell swoop and then all of the technical and it's almost like you're going through the same thing as uh, Leo, like you do the thing, it's wonderful, but now you have to navigate physical reality mm -hmm. in a way that you are, weren't practiced at. So when you bring us the second portion of the book, I'm sure it'll be a, a less arduous <laughs> and quicker process. Mm -hmm. To me, the entire book is full of universal laws and principles. Mm -hmm. I see so much here and the uh, stars and the different designs on the book, I think it makes it the colors, everything makes it very easy for children. Sometimes colors are, that children are seeing online are too violent. Mm -hmm. Some, the, the softer, easier colors mm -hmm. to let them relax. Uh, so much thoughtfulness, so many principles, so much of the higher elevations are incorporated in this. So we're very pleased to bring this book forward we have uh, recommended it already for our uh, reading for our book club. We're encouraging everyone on our mailing list to, to get a copy. And we are so pleased to know you. Any final thoughts before we go? Well, I'm so pleased to know you. And I am very grateful to be here with you and to have this wonderful conversation with you. So thank you so much. Thank you. And we encourage you to come back uh, with your next book Absolutely. and talk to us. And any new developments and let us know what you're doing. We'll follow you. We'll make, we'll make sure our, our people know to follow you. Thank yes. you, Fia. Thank so you. We, we want to put our hand over our heart and say to you, uh, in Lakesh and Veritas, which is oneness and truth, with honor, respect, and gratitude to all. Thank in you. And, and Veritas to you. Thank you so much.